y'all. Welcome to Project 54. This is episode two. This week we are talking about family favorites. I'm Miss Katie. This is Heritage Ways, where we honor home, celebrate heritage, and spread hope. Part of what we have always eaten in our home and part of our southern born and bred heritage is banana pudding. Now, we say banana pudding. <laughs> That's just how we say it. So I'm about to make good, old-fashioned, cooked banana pudding, episode two of Project 54. I hope you'll stay tuned for the rest of the week and even more family favorites. Y'all, I am thrilled to make this cooked, old-fashioned banana pudding recipe easy for y'all. You're going to need a cold pot on the stove. I've got my cowful on. You're going to need a dish to put your um, banana pudding in. And I've got this um, of my mother's. This is a three-quart. The, the cowful on pot's a three-quart as well. So this is a three-quart corning ware that I've got to layer everything in. You're going to need four eggs, three tablespoons of all-purpose flour, two cups of whole milk, three-fourths cup of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt. I use Himalayan pink salt. Also, I use um, organic cane sugar. I try to get the best ingredients I can. This is unbleached flour. This is unsalted organic grass-fed butter. And then I try to use raw milk if I can. You're gonna need a good vanilla. You're gonna need a box of vanilla wafers or Nella wafers or whatever kind you want, generic or name brand. You're going to need three to four bananas, but you don't want them to be too ripe. In the cold pan, you want to put the three-fourths cup of sugar, three tablespoons of flour, a half a teaspoon of salt. Give that a little stir, whisk. And put your two cups of whole milk in the cold pan, and then you're going to turn it on. You're going to turn it on, oh, medium. And you're just going to whisk, stir and whisk, until it begins to thicken. While that is, I don't want to leave this once it starts to thicken, but I'm going to be right here next door. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and put a layer of vanilla wafers in the bottom of my dish just while this is starting to warm up. There's no danger of it burning at this point. All right, we're starting to get some bubbling around the edge. I've been standing here stirring and whisking for the past, oh, I don't know, five or so minutes. It's not going to burn because I'm going to continue to whisk and it is just going to simmer and thicken. Once it gets to this point, I'm going to turn it down one notch, and I'm going to let it boil for about one minute. It's time to hone our hospitality skills. Consider making individual banana pudding cups when serving a great crowd. All right, at this point, I'm going to turn it down just so I can manage it. I'm going to turn it down to right above low. I have separated three of the eggs, separated the eggs yolks from the whites. So I have put three egg yolks in here plus a whole egg. I'm just going to kind of whisk this up. And I'm going to temper these eggs. Temper is where you're slowly warming the eggs so that you're not um, having scrambled eggs in your banana pudding. So I'm just going to take my spoon. You see how the spoon is coated? That's what we want, a coated spoon. So I'm going to just take a little bit of this, maybe even a teaspoon, and I'm going to put it in my eggs, stir them up, and do it a little bit more, maybe another teaspoon. Now 
And then we're going to add the eggs back into the pudding. And we're going to bring it up to 100, about 155 degrees. Basically, if it's boiling or simmering, I should say. If it's simmering, then it's at the right temp. The reason you want to get it up that high is you want the eggs to coagulate. You don't want them to, if you don't get it up high enough, then uh, the banana pudding could be watery. So we're just bringing it up to a another simmer, just like we had a minute ago. And we'll let it simmer for about one minute or so. It's best to let the banana pudding refrigerate if you want it to set up uh, and be a little firmer. You can let it refrigerate overnight. But I do know somebody in my family who loves it right out of the oven. At this point, I'm going to turn the timer on for one minute. And my heat is between medium and low. All right, now we are turning it off. We're going to add a tablespoon of butter. This is unsalted butter. If you have salted, that's fine. That adds a binding thickening agent and flavor. Then I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla. The trick my mother taught me was that typically the cap of the vanilla is a teaspoon on most vanillas. And just get that mixed in until the butter's melted and the vanilla is mixed. Now I'm going to let that sit there while I get everything else ready. I have a layer of vanilla wafers, or Nella wafers as we call them in the South. And I do reference our living in the South. We live now in middle Ohio where the Lord has placed us but we are born and bred from the south and now we are learning a different land a different region a different people and it's so wonderful to be able to live here as well so I'm just going to put a layer of bananas just like this just slice them and put a layer on top of the vanilla wafers then a layer of pudding then another layer of vanilla wafers two more bananas, more pudding. You want to end with your pudding because you're going to put meringue on it. Now at this point, we're not finished. I like to kind of decorate the edge, even though I'm going to put meringue on it. Kind of put these around the edge. You can make whipped topping if you want to do that or if you want to purchase whipped topping, but you can make whipped cream. You can leave the meringue off. I mean, this is ready to eat, but we're going to bake it because we want the meringue on top. And that is Southern Classic. <laughs> I'm just going to crush these because I have them. There is no rule about what to put where on this. You have your pudding, your old-fashioned cooked banana pudding. It doesn't need to be baked at this point if you don't put anything on it. You can put it in the refrigerator, let it cool, it's good to go. You can eat it warm. We're going to make a meringue for it though. Now, I'll tell you a couple of things. I have my three egg whites in here where I had divided the eggs for this and used the three yolks. But I also added three more egg whites because I wanted a bigger meringue and I just, I just like that. So I have six egg whites. You can do three or more. We're going to beat these with the electric mixer. The rule of thumb when you're making meringue, older lady taught me this, old country cook. Uh, and I say that out of respect. She's gone now, but she was in her 90s when she, she taught me this. But um, one tablespoon of sugar to an egg white. Now, I'm using powdered sugar today. So she used, you know, just table sugar, real, like just granulated sugar. So I might use scant tablespoons since I'm using powdered sugar and it's going to be more uh, concentrated or dense, if you will. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to do this until soft peaks, peaks form. Then I'm going to start adding my six scant tablespoons of sugar and continue to um, 
whip this meringue. We have soft peaks. All right, you don't want to push the limit because you don't want to break it down. So this is perfect. Look at that. It doesn't come out of the bowl. You can turn it upside down. It doesn't go anywhere. It's great. <laughs> You see why I used extra egg whites? And you can use the yolks for something else. Just add them to your scrambled eggs or feed them to your dog. It's great for the dog's coat and fur, especially if uh, they're good pastured organic eggs. This isn't maybe magazine worthy, but it sure is worthy at, at, for a, of a dinner on the ground at a country church. We're going to bake it 350 until it's brown on top. All right, it was in for seven minutes. Ah, look at that. Yeah. All right, for those who are new to Heritage Ways, this is my husband, Mr. Patient. Say, hey, y'all. Say hi, Mr. Patient. Hi, Mr. Patient. Okay. Now, all right, I've got a spoon. We're going to taste it. I do prefer it cold, but this is old-fashioned, homemade, cooked, baked banana pudding. This is the way I, this is the kind I grew up on. Granny made the, this? Or, and your mama, or just granny? Just granny. Granny made homemade, cooked, baked banana, banana pudding. pudding. Help yourself. Like, just... It, it, whatever you want to do. <laughs> so, while he's trying that... I appreciate y'all being here at Project 54, episode banana pudding. Well, just, just, well, I made it. a lot of meringue. It's kind of tall. Look, just go yeah, all I'm, the way down to the bottom well, and come up. I'm making a mess. Well, it doesn't matter. It's yours to eat. Look at that. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hope you'll stay tuned yeah. for the rest of this week, which is family favorites. Is this a family favorite? Mm -hmm. Okay, don't talk with your mouth full. And we will see you next time. See y'all. Thanks for being here. Today's episode of Project 54, Banana Pudding, is brought to you by three of our patrons that are supporters of ours over on Patreon.com. Those folks are Karen and Terry and Tanya and Matt and Stephanie. You can head over to Patreon.com, link in the description box, to see what these folks receive in the way of perks and exclusive and additional content as they're supporting and walking alongside us in what we consider our ministry of honoring home, celebrating heritage, and spreading hope.